So the concept of HTTPS traffic decryption really isn't new. As long as we've been doing traffic analysis, think intrusion detection, intrusion prevention, anytime we've wanted to look at communication between devices, we have to know, is that communication, um, you know, is it hostile or not? Well, the moment it's encrypted, we're in the dark. We have no idea what we're passing. We're just passing boxes back and forth. Could contain some awful virus. We really don't know. So in order to, pro uh, to provide better protection mechanisms, um, we can get in here and we can do <laughs> a bit of dirty work. It's funny because when we talk about encryption, encryption is used to protect against man-in-the-middle attacks. Well, wait a minute. We turn encryption on and we just wanted to become the man in the middle. We want to be able to analyze all that traffic as it passes back and forth. So in order to do so, we leverage SSL. Effectively, the user is going to build an SSL connection to the WSA. The WSA is going to build an encrypted session to the website, effectively being a, pr a proper proxy. The lack of visibility within HTTPS web traffic introduces new threats, right? You've got hidden malicious code, viruses, spam, phishing, uh, leaking confidential information. If we're in the dark, we can't enforce our rules. So it's really kind of a, a double-edged blade there with encryption. Um, it's something that we use to keep pesky hackers out of our data, but it's something pesky hackers use to keep automated tools and administrators out of their attacks. So the WSA has the ability to decrypt and inspect HTTPS traffic. Decryption can be a pretty heavy job. So when you look at a box when sizing an environment, you want to think about the types of features that you're going to be using. If you look at a box and you say, how much traffic can this analyze? You want to wonder, is that with HTTPS encryption, uh, decryption enabled or disabled? Are we doing things like Unicode decoding? Are we doing things like putting together fragments, fragment reassembly? Um, all of those require additional overhead, right? So it means the number of packets per second that we can process will fall. Um, but we're getting, of course, uh, better decision making because we're performing additional analysis. So we don't have infinite resources. We typically have to kind of choose uh, which of the features that we want. And if you're in a position where you're sizing the environment, you may want to buy additional hardware, right? As time goes on, you get more and more signatures, you get more and more features, you tend to run a little bit slower. You tend to creep in terms of how much memory you're utilizing. So if this is a box that you plan to deploy for three years or five years, we just want to make sure that we've got the hardware capacity to perform HTTPS decrypt. So to do this, we're going to want to man in the middle of the traffic or effectively proxy HTTPS. In order to do this, it gets a little bit tricky. So root certificate, who is the root? This is what we say uh, or mean when we say trusted third party. I could implement, let's say, Active Directory. Within my uh, Active Directory domain, I take a server and I tell it to be a CA server. It's just a role that we add. At that point, I have to take my private key and use it to self-sign my own root certificate. So I am a private root CA. I'm making my own certificates. Who's going to believe me? For right now, nobody in the world. I've got to go around to each of the devices and say, you know what, you should trust the certificates that I create. This means all of the endpoints in your organization, phones, tablets, uh, televisions, whatever you're plugging into your network, if you want to leverage this, um, it has to believe that we are a trusted third party. Now, the moment that you're able to inject a root certificate on someone else's computer, you own everything they do. Every SSL handshake, every way that we're authenticating, that we're really talking to the right person on the other side, it's all been circumvented. Because the SSL handshake, when we look at an identity certificate for Cisco.com, for eBay, etc., it's really coming from the WSA. So I'm like, connect me to eBay. And your WSA is like, eBay.com right here. And you're like, that's not eBay. That's your WSA but it's behaving as a man in the middle. It's effectively become an HTTPS proxy. There's two separate HTTPS sessions negotiated, one with the user, one with the web server. So your traffic is protected crossing the wire, just realize that the WSA has got full access to everything inside of that. So as far as implementing certificates, the server certificate verifies the authenticity of a specific web server, like cisco.com or gmail.com. And it's used for the HTTPS encryption and decryption process. Remember, at the beginning, 
uh, of the session, there's an SSL handshake. What cipher do you support? What encryption? What hashing? Um, what do you want to use for key generation? We have to agree on something. And if we don't agree, we'll never proceed. We'll never get the web page to load. So that's something that has to match on both sides. Um, both sides need to accept the root certificate. So again, if you're, you decided that you're going to build your own CA server, that's fine, but you have to manually go to all the devices, or if they're all enrolled with Active Directory, you can use group policy to tell those devices that they should trust this root certificate. The moment that they do, game over in terms of their privacy. Uh, we can generate our own certificates and put that private key on the WSA, and the WSA has got the ability to intercept all communications now. If a root CA is not trusted by a client machine, a user must accept the certificate, meaning that they're going to get an error. So here's a certificate implementation overview. Uh, the process of importing the root certificate and the matching private key is not super complicated. Remember, we're importing it on the WSA. Where did it come from? Your existing CA server. You go, I don't have an existing CA server. It sounds complex. It isn't. There's a window uh, within Microsoft that makes it really easy. Also, there's Cisco devices that have the ability to behave as a CA server. So it just depends what approach that you want to take. Um, I've had really good luck over the years with Microsoft. I'm not a giant Microsoft fan, uh, but their CA services tend to get the job done for a lot of clients. So this is what it really looks like. Um, you know, you're going to have two separate connections. This is our WSA in the middle. And there's TLS on the inside. There's TLS on the outside. There's full visibility to everything that's going by. If there's things internally that we can't decode or there's more encryption that lies within, again, we can additionally find rules that say this type of traffic is not prohibited. We're going to go ahead and block it. So overview of HTTPS decryption policies. The HTTPS decryption policy on the WSA provides granular control over the decrypted web traffic. In other words, what do we decrypt? Is it a big lever, everything or nothing? Of course not. We can allow specific domains to go by without tampering with them. So I go, ah, if you're going to your bank, if you're going to your doctor, if you're handling healthcare information, if you're trying to fill out uh, your prescription at Walgreens, I don't want to see that stuff. If you're going to OneDrive, if you're going uh, to Dropbox.com, those are the types of things that I want to see inside of. Um, if there's maybe social media, there's a lot of stuff you can use for data exfiltration. People will just paste things into draft of emails, and they'll never send the email. Um, they may just push everything to an online drive, right? So the content that's coming in and out of the organization, even if it's over SSL, if we can jump in there, if we can scan those documents, if we can look for those dirty words, we can potentially capture information that's trying to leave our organization. Stopping things like industrial espionage, um, stopping just sloppy things like accidental data loss. So when we look at traffic, we say, hey, there's some traffic. Okay, what do you want to do with it? I go, hmm, going to drop it. Alternatively, I'm going to monitor it. Alternatively, I could just pass it through as it sits, leave it encrypted, like for a bank. Alternatively, I could decrypt it. So again, decrypt is what the conversation is really about. Let's take a look at what's communicating between us and uh, a lot of times just personal mail sites or personal file share sites. Somebody's going to mega.co.nz. Yeah, let's decrypt that. Let's see what's being passed back and forth. So decrypting HTTPS traffic can be resource intensive. I said that a couple times at the beginning. Um, what does it really mean? Just if, you're, if this is something that you're going to enable, remember you're applying it to different users. Uh, this could be something that I apply and it has nearly no impact, or it could have drastic impact. Depends on how much traffic I'm applying it to and how hard is the box working before I enable this.